Hello everybody, Tracy Brown here. So we're going to revisit a topic that it's a difficult one. And so first I'm, I'm going to off, I'm going to say that you never ever need to deal with the scale in this whole recovery process. You actually don't have to. I know there's a few exceptions that where it's really, really beneficial. If you're a person who is definitely needing to, um, you know, monitor um, you know, weight change up in a way to make sure that what you're doing is actually getting you somewhere or they're actually not going to like any kind of hypermetabolic state. You need to, to know what's happening so you're not cutting yourself short. But for the majority of us, we can make it just fine without ever using the scale. But I know that that's a way in which we measure ourselves. And the article I posted above this video, I go into depth about sometimes what is actually, what actually we're looking for when we're measuring ourselves with a piece of metal. But I also today wanna to talk about all the ways we do measure ourselves, whether it's not a piece of metal. Maybe you're like, I don't care about the weight so much, but it's the other stuff, like how your clothes fit. Now, of course I want you to be comfortable. Um, it's really important to wear clothes that fit you because wearing clothes that don't fit you is just gonna make you more self-conscious and when we're in vulnerable situations, we're going to be super focused on what doesn't feel good versus what we can do about what doesn't feel good otherwise in our lives. So super important to wear uncomfortable clothes if that, if just for that reason and for the other reason that you deserve to. I mean, it's a self, it's a self torture act to not wear things that don't fit you. So anyway, but if we don't use um, scales or maybe you don't use clothes to measure quote unquote like how you are supposed to feel about yourself, then maybe you do other things that are more subtle that I actually want to talk about today, which is just reflections, reflections in the mirror. And then also just that reflection, like let's say you see yourself and you're kind of okay, but then you go out and about in the world and you might have this belief that like, oh, well, this belly or these legs or these arms aren't acceptable in this situation and now all of a sudden you're feeling bad again as if something magically changed with your body or even something changed with um, how you even felt about it like at your core and so when that happens that's telling me about just this you know whatever situation is happening is mirroring back something about you that still needs your attention that needs your yeah just needs your attending to and that's what I want you to do with this video today is think about like, okay, well, I feel pretty okay when I'm at my house in my t-shirt and shorts. But if I were to go out in the world like this in these clothes, um, you start projecting like, oh my gosh, people actually see me like this. And so we need to talk about actually what that means. It means some, so much more than the size of your body. It's just not about that. The other thing I want to talk about is this... Um, whole identity issue. Just this idea that you have to be seen out in the world in a certain way. Like, you know, I can be more okay with the people I know and they can see at least some parts of my not okayness, maybe you believe. But out in the world, it's like, nope, I'm just going to like act like I don't have this body that is a size I don't like or I'm going to act like my weight is at a place where it's, it's um, not so great for me, let's say if you're underweight. I'm going to pretend like that's not a thing and just do what I always do. And then it only gets our attention when people bring it up to us. And so I want to talk to you about this idea that you are your body size or that it means anything about you. And I know that's also really coupled up for most of us around birth and about, you know, fully taking up space, fully feeling like that we deserve to be taken care of. Um, not so much by other people, maybe in the past, that's exactly what the deficit was that we needed. Now as adults, it's like, can we give ourselves the tending to that we need now as adults? And do we know, do we have a platform to know what that looks like? Like what good enough care is? Do we even know what that looks like? And sometimes if you don't know, the poor substitute's gonna be, you know, just checking out ourselves in different ways where there's like this, that anxiety kind of feeling of like, go, go, go not stopping, a um, little bit in denial that we have certain needs of like sleep, rest, enough food in the house, 
or even just stopping to get something or the opposite where it feels like I'm little, not all that present um, in, a, in a slower, um, kind of numb kind of way, basically. Not the numb of like anxiety kind of way, but the numb of like, I just don't even locate where I'm at and, oh, it's Thursday. I haven't got groceries in two weeks. How did that happen? Um, or three weeks or whatever it is. And so when we're doing those behaviors, we start to kind of think like that's who I am. It's just that's kind of what I do. And it's certainly not who you are um, is probably the person who's watching this video that is a survivor and who really cares and wants to be free. Um, the rest of it is distortion. The rest of it is a survival mechanism. The rest of it is that's just kind of what I've always done. And I don't know who I would be without it. So not just do we measure ourselves with food and, yeah, with food and weight and the scale and clothes, but we also have like this self-evaluation sometimes we do internally of like what that means about me to get groceries as much as I need or as often as I need or to stop by places to get things that I don't have that I really like um, and, and making some kind of meaning of, you know, if you do that or not and what that means about you and it's it's construct in the story but I also know it's it's strategy that needs your attention to figure out well what's what's keeping me here you know what is it that I'm getting from this um even though probably I imagine if if you're like anything like me it was super painful um it was super painful to like just chronically run and not fully, you know, as much as I'd like to think that I was super competent and I wasn't really all that grounded, to be honest, for most of my life. Um, probably not until, honestly, the last 10 years, um, maybe even eight, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Like, I mean, it's progressively gets better, but I think it's really important that, um, that once you start looking at exactly all the little things that might be how you measure yourself, what you feel like that you, who you are, because you're not that piece of, number on that piece of metal, you're not, um, how little you can get away with eating, all that stuff. That's not actually who you are. So it's not just a piece of metal we measure ourselves with. Sometimes it is. And if it is, I implore you and I really encourage you. I've done lots of videos about this, but I encourage you to think about, okay, so you weigh one pound more. Can we deal with, the, can we be flexible about the fact that like bodies need a range or not? If you weighed yourself 10 times today, you're not going to be the same number 10 different times. So what is it that you're actually trying to like control? Cause you're not, you're not that powerful. You don't get to decide your weight fluctuations. We don't get to decide. We don't get to decide like uh, the amount of urine that we produce. We don't get to decide like how our body respirates. We don't get to make those decisions, but what we can do is if we catch ourselves trying to make believe that that's something that we can control, to be willing to look a little bit deeper. So I hope this video was helpful today and I'll talk to y'all real soon. Take care.